Hi everyone, welcome to my talk on compact neural graphics primitives with learned hash probing. There's an exciting trend in the world right now towards local 3D content. This includes technological developments in 3D displays, frameworks and tools for client-side 3D interactivity, and emerging applications that make use of local 3D content. A good user experience for client-side 3D is a distribution problem because we need to be able to get the 3D models to clients quickly. This means that we need to have technology for compression and streaming of 3D content. As a matter of fact, one of the coolest client-side 3D demo is web-based Gaussian splats, but it's really hard to show this to people. I've been trying to spread how cool it is that you can play with Gaussian splats on your iPhone, but with a 56.5 megabyte file size on the IC Sydney Wi-Fi, people get bored before they even get to see the demo. This is why I have a personal vindication to work on compression. Let me start with some background. One of the core cool emerging paradigms for representing 3D data compactly is neural fields. Neural fields represent your 3D data as the vector field. For example, the input might be 3D coordinates, and your neural network might be a function that maps from 3D coordinates to a RGB color or something. Classical neural fields do this with a single large multilayer perceptron. Although compact, this can be prohibitively expensive in terms of compute. The dominant approach that have emerged to alleviate this issue is to use a feature grid. These feature grids are able to do most of the heavy lifting by moving most of the parameters out of the neural network into an external data structure, which lets you get away with a tiny neural network. There are lots of different types of feature grids in the literature, like octrees and axis line texture maps. But the one that has shown great promise is the hash grid using instant NGP. The hash grid in instant NGP, to this day, still seems to be one of the fastest frameworks for nerf reconstruction in terms of training time. So what exactly is the issue of hash grids? Hash grids work by mapping a query point, for example an XYZ's 3D coordinate, through a spatial hash function that maps it to a random integer, which is used as an index into a codebook. This is done for all corners of a square or a cube and then interpolated. Although this is very fast, hash collisions can be an issue. Imagine two completely unrelated corners get mapped to the same feature codebook entry. This manifests as an visual error because the losses pull the features towards two different things. This is why Instant NGP requires very large codebooks in practice for good quality. A parallel approach that emerged with hash grids is index learning. Here, instead of hashing the coordinates, integers are stored on each corner of a grid. Then, index learning is able to learn these integers by using the, the softmax vectors at trading time and using a, a technique known as straight through estimation to learn this in a differentiable manner. Although this lets you get away with a smaller codebook, this approach is pro prohibitively expensive for large codebooks due to having it to store floating point values for every single possible index value and does not scale for larger scenes and larger codebooks. So our goal is then to get the best of both worlds in terms of being compact, but also fast. We saw that the problem with hash grids comes from the hash collisions. We hypothesize that we can get away with small codebook if we were able to solve the collision issue. As it turns out, collision resolution for hash tables is a well-studied problem. And if you open up a famous intro to algorithms textbook, you'll find lots of ideas. One such idea is linear probing, where the idea is that once you hash into some entry in a hash table, you sequentially access the table until you find the key of your choice. We want to think about how we can extend this sort of idea to a learnable setting. The essence of linear probing is to find an offset that works. An offset is just an int integer. So in the sphere of index learning, can we instead do offset learning? We set out to do exactly that, and we call it learned probing. First, we start from a usual hash grid algorithm where XYZ is mapped to some index. Then, instead of selecting a single vector using that index, like we do in instant NGP, we select a subset of size NP, which we call the probing range. We then need a mechanism to select a single vector from this probing range. To do this, we use index learning. We use another hash function to index into an indexing codebook, which has a bunch of softmax vector vectors stored in it. Then we can extract a softmax vector, do straight through estimation, and use this as a differentiable index mechanism to get a single feature out of this. This approach is cool because it lets us disaggregate the probing range from the feature codebook size. 
using a very similar technique uh, known as a, as a index learning, we are able to do collision resolution for very large code books. That all seemed very complicated, but math mathematically, this ends up being a very simple arithmetic operation. We basically just take the same sort of hash mechanism, but add an offset. This ends up being super fast when implemented correctly in CUDA. Here are some results that show the quality size trade-off for our method. We see a couple of interesting things. First, we see that the difference in probing ranges denoted by the dotted dash and solid lines doesn't make a huge difference. This is amazing news because probing ranges influence trading costs significantly, but we see that it doesn't really matter when the probing range is too much. Oh, what, it doesn't really matter what the probing range is too much. Second, we see that we're able to successfully get a much better trade-off than instant NGP, which is so, shown as the stars. We specifically see that we get a much larger improvement in quality from using indexing when we use smaller code books, which matches our intuition. Here's a table showing performances. We see that when using a small probing range, the turning time only takes a 26% hit. We show bigger probing ranges, which incurs slower training time too, but if you remember the last slide, we showed that this doesn't seem to matter too much. You can also see that the inference time, regardless of the hyperparameter choices, remains fast, and even faster than instant NGP at equal quality, because we can get away with a smaller code book, which is much more cache efficient. Here's some results on the Nerf Blender scenes. We see that we don't actually beat some transform-based methods like Wavelet Nerf, but these methods are very slow in terms of both training and inference compared to our method. Here's an eye candy result showing our representation at one megabyte. We actually even see that we are able to be JPEG for large megapixel images by pretty significant margins for small sizes. We also handily beat other neural methods like Acorn. And that's a wrap for the results. But at this point, you might be wondering if any of this matters in the age of Gaussian splats that has come in the last couple of months. Lots of Twitter influencers are saying it's over for nerfs. I would argue that our work still does matter. If you go back to why neural fields were interesting at all in the first place, compactness was one of the attractive factors. As a matter of fact, Gaussian splats are not compact. While Gaussian splats take tens of megabytes for medium-sized scenes, we're able to do that same scene at one megabyte, a 50x difference in size. But I don't think the problem is really choosing neural fields over splats or, and vice versa. I envision a future where we might separate the storage format from the rendering format, use neural fields as a compact transmission format, splats as a fast rendering format. Of course, this is not entirely a new idea. People have, saying that, have been saying that we should do this for over 40 years in computer graphics. Even in games like Dreams PS4 made by one of our illustrious co-authors, Alex Evans, they separate the modeling primitive, a constructed solid geometry tree, from the actual thing rendered in practice, which is splats. And just a few weeks ago, the authors of Wavelet Nerf really did show that this is possible. They use hash grids as a compression method for Gaussian splats. Presumably, our compact NGB technique can be directly applied here to save even more megabytes. And with that, it's a wrap. I thank my amazing co-authors for this project, and check out our full paper on the website linked on the right. Thank you.